Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Yay! Uh, it's just so awesome to come and give thanks. Um, and somebody said, do we do this because of the Americans? No. Um, <laughs> we, we have Thanksgiving month because God in Scripture, he calls his people to a feast. Good morning, Joel. Um, he call- <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he, calls, he calls his people um, to a feast of Sukkot, which is a feast of Thanksgiving. Normally about this time of the year, at harvest time. Um, and it was a time when... The, all God's people would stop and remember what he's done and give thanks. Um, And Isaiah uh, 12, it says, Oh, and on that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people, make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the earth. That's why we have Thanksgiving month. And, and my prayer is that it doesn't, it's not just this month or not just today, but Thanksgiving is something that we take um, into the rest of our lives with us. But, but even for God's people um, in the Old Testament and for us again, God's going, there's an importance in Thanksgiving. Um, it's, it's important. One of my best verses um, in, uh, to do with Thanksgiving is in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That give thanks is a command. He's going, guys, this is good for us to stop and give thanks, to take our eyes off ourselves and our circumstances and turn them back onto God and give thanks. And so that's what we've come to do this morning. We have come to give thanks. Um, And so welcome. Is there anybody here for the very first time this morning? Anybody? Welcome, Nate. Does it feel like your first time? It's great to have you with us again. Anybody else? At the back, welcome to the ladies at the back. It's great to have you with us. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Let's give them a round of applause. It's so great to have you in the service. We are so blessed to belong to this beautiful family, and we hope you feel welcome. Normally, I would say I'm going to invite you to coffee afterwards, but due to Eskom, there's no coffee. But due to Grace, there is cake. So, so don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so don't run home. Um, please come and share the most delightful cake with us, and we'd really love to get to know um, all the news. And to the rest of the family, it'll be just really lovely uh, to touch base with everyone. So Thanksgiving Sunday is for us is a time where we focus on, on, on God and giving him thanks. But we also stop to thank all of those who've served. Um, and we in this family, this, this doesn't happen without the full body of Christ. Um, and, and that working together. And, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I, I just want to... Um, we don't have time to call them out by names. I wish I could. Um, and I wish I could buy you a huge big gift, but I can't. But what we're going to do this morning is if you serve, and I call out the group that you serve in, don't you just want to stand? I just want everybody else around you to see, and we're just going to pray for you. So if you serve in worship, in any kind of format at worship, please stand and remain standing. If you are hostess at the back and help handing out or serving or blessing, please stand. If you are an adventure church leader, please stand. If you are in the prayer team, please stand. If you are a teen church leader, please stand. Gap and Vibe leaders, please stand. Fireflies leaders, please stand. Uh, those who help serve at coffee at the back on Sunday, please stand. Home group leaders and home group, home group hosts, please stand. Those who are involved, I want to say in the finances, and hopefully that all of you would stand, but what I'm talking about now is, is the guys who do the, the so Jose, uh, Gail, um, and those who help, Don, if they could stand for, for the finances as well. Those who help serve in communion, if you could please stand. Um, and those who help pack and sort the, 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 the uh, meals, once a month meals, please stand. Isn't that amazing? Don't we have an awesome family? Let's give them a round of applause. And can you, I know they're going to sit, but where they are, you remember where they are. Put your hands on them, and we're going to thank God for them. Father God, thank you so much for this body and this family. Thank you for all of those who serve in so many capacities. We are richly, richly blessed by them. And Father, we pray that you will bless them for being a blessing. Amen. One more thank you. We have a very special family in this church. So we... to. 
for the worship to happen, and we're very blessed with our worship team, but for worship to happen, we need a practice in the week. Um, and unfortunately, the church is not available. So we have a family in this, in this body who every week allow us to invade their home and make a lot of noise. Um, and they set up and they give us drinks and they are just the most amazing hosts, even when they're not on duty. And that's the stains. And I just want to really honor the stains. So thank you so much. <laughs> You may have received a lolly with that in the shape of a flower, and that was just our small gift to everybody here to say thank you. The body of, the Christ, the body of Christ is, and, and this family of valley is every single person, not one more than the other, and we are so grateful to every single one of you. You are loved, you are appreciated, and this family wouldn't be this family without you. So we, we are very, very grateful for you. And this morning, we have got a very special family member that is, um, <laughs> who's going to share with you this morning. And this is Tara. And if you don't know Tara, you need to get to know her because she's an amazing lady. Okay, so I don't know how I'm going to do this. Seeing you without my glasses, but not seeing my notes without my glasses. Um, so I'm Tara. I think most people though actually know me as James and Grace's mom. So I don't think many people even know my real name anymore. <laughs> I'm just their mom. Um, but I think it's amazing that Valley has this month that's dedicated to um, Thanksgiving. I think it's such a fabulous thing to be able to look at the year that's gone and look at our highs and lows and everything that we have to be thankful to God for. Um, I'm sure many of you something. Oh, there we go. I'm sure that many of you know that uh, Bethel Music has a song called The Goodness of God, and I love that song. It's one of my top, top favorites. And in fact, it's the song that I play the loudest in our house, um, except for the Afrikaans songs that I'm indoctrinating my children with. Sorry, Mike. Not. Um, but uh, there's a chorus, chorus in the song, Life, You Have Been Faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And whenever I'm in our house and I'm having my little worship session, my own, and that brings me to tears. Um, I, and my kids look at me because they don't quite understand. I think they're a bit confused as to what's happening. Um, because... That is absolutely true of my life, is that God has been so faithful and so, so good, um, and that I really, he's given me this breath to be able to sing of his goodness. I always tell Mike that when I die one day, um, I, want to sing, I want them to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness at my memorial service, because I just think it's been God's theme in my life. So most of you don't know my story up close and personal, and... I'm a lot older than people give me credit for, so I'm not going to go through my whole story because you're going to be here for a long time. Um, but one of the huge pieces of my story was a longing for a family. So I think most of us sitting in this room, you know, have always longed uh, to be married and to have a family. And that was just an unfulfilled desire and longing for so, so, so uh, many years in my life. Um, and I must be honest, there were times when I felt like God was not hearing me at all, um, or even worse, was maybe ignoring me, you know, so maybe he was hearing me, but just deciding to ignore me, and I know that's not what God does, but that's what it felt like at times, um, and yet in my older years, I sometimes joke and say I'm a bit like Sarah, you know, in the Old Testament, Abraham's wife, in my older years, God's blessed me in more ways that I, than I could imagine um, in terms of uh, just a family. Um, Mike and I got married three years ago, and that's a whole story in and of itself, which I <laughs> won't bore you with. Um, but 20 months ago, we were blessed with these two amazing little gifts that are currently having their breakfast. Um, and their story is one that's saturated with God's kindness and goodness. Um, and so before Mike and I got married, we already knew I wouldn't be able to have children because of surgery that I had to have. And so we started a surrogacy process soon after we got married. Um, and for those of you, if you don't know how surrogacy works, it's basically someone else, some incredible angel, um, volunteers to carry children for you. Um, and in our case, 
It was a complete stranger, so someone who didn't even know us. Um, surrogacy is a very expensive process. It has lots of complications. Um, many people have had lots of disappointments and failures in it. And yet for Mike and I, our story was God just made our path straight. And so every step in the journey of that process, God, any, there would just almost seem to be no obstacles because it just was a smooth um, process. And um, so we're so, so grateful that 20 months ago um, we received our precious gifts. Um, and so as I look at my life and I look at all the no's and I look at all the not yet but waits and I look at all the yeses, that God answered. Um, I'm so grateful for how God, that it's not just about what he has given me, but it's also what he has revealed to me about himself um, through that whole process. Um, There are no's that I can look back now on my life, and I'm so grateful that God did say no, you know, that he didn't say yes. At the time, I might not have felt that way. But looking back, I can see, you know, how he was at work. Um, In the waits, um, which were very, very, very frustrating, um, God taught me so much about his character, about his love for me, um, about his word, because in those times I had to go deeper in his word than any of the other times. And so God um, revealed so much of that to me. And so, so I just have three things that um, I think I've learned from, from my journey um, around yeah, just longing for a family and then God just being so faithful to that is one that we cannot pay God back, um, that all his good gifts to us are from his grace. They flow out of his grace. Um, John Piper writes, he says, First, it is impossible to pay God back for all the grace he has given us. We can't even begin to pay him back. Second, even if we succeeded in paying him back for all his grace to us, we would only succeed in turning it into a business transaction. If we can pay him back, it wasn't grace. (laughs) And so I'm so thankful for the fact that God has just extended his grace, not only through Jesus, but through everything in my life that he's shown me his grace. Um, And then second, that he's better than all his gifts to us. And sometimes I lose sight of that, honestly. Um, I look at my husband and my family and my friends and my extended family, um, the job I get to do, you know, and I just go, oh, my gosh, you know, and I lose sight of who's actually given me all those. But there's nothing better um, than all his gifts. Um, And so our gratitude has to be rooted in the beauty of the giver of the gifts rather than in the gift itself. Um, And then the last thing is, that we actually, in all our, whatever we face in life, wherever our hearts are at, whatever we're desiring and longing for, the thing that we should be most longing for is let's plead for more of him. Um, Because there's nothing our souls need more than Jesus. Um, And so even my deepest longing for a family and kids, um, that ultimately my soul needed more of Jesus than anything else. Um, And so I think just in this Thanksgiving month and as we move forward from this, not to lose sight of our thankfulness, but to focus more on on how much we need more of Jesus. Thank you, Tara. He is so good. And I think I said it last time to you, but it's... Go and speak to some of those folks about the bigger story. Um, we read the statements, and but there, just God's goodness behind every one of those boards. There is a much bigger story of what God is doing, um, and I know even those even those who, who weren't um, weren't able to come up today. We all have something to be thankful for. God is so good. We thank Him for what He's done, for what He is doing, and what He's going to do. And as Tara said, because He's the one that we give thanks for, not about the things, but because of Him who he is. Um, and so we just are so thankful. I just want to uh, give five things. We're going to um, go to communion in just a moment. Um, but they're just five things. I, I want handles to thankfulness that I, I want to just give to us to take home. And they, they're hanging on the tree. Um, and so it's, they're not going to be a big surprise. But sometimes when, we, when it comes to saying thanks, God, it, it feels like a bit weak. 
and, and, and as I was going through scripture, I realized there were different ways that people gave things. Do you remember the story of in Luke chapter, what was it, 17, with the, 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 the lepers, the 10 lepers that came to Jesus and he healed all of them? And then only one came back to give thanks. And now my heart is that we're not, we, we will be that one, that we won't be the nine. But he comes back and I, he just, I want to read what scripture says, verse 15 and 16 says, um, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. There, there is, there is power in praise and in thanksgiving. There is purpose and power in this. This is not just something that it's a fun service. Yes, it is. But it's so much more than that. And so God calls us um, to to be part of of what he's doing in all of this. Um, And so the first one, the way, the five methods that we give thanks, the first one is to say it. He came and it says, he said thank you. So the first way that we give thanks is to say thank you with our mouths. Um, and, and we see that in scripture, in Psalm 7 and 17, it says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. He gave, he stopped and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for what you've done. And that's what we've done today. And, and my prayer is that what, that's what we'll do as we go into the week. But it's more than just speaking to God. Thankfulness is often speaking to others about what God has done. That's thankfulness. Do you know what God's done for me? That's a way of speaking thanks to God and giving him thanks by not only speaking to him but to others. And, and stop in your day and find one person that you can tell of God's goodness to you and give thanks. And the third one David does in Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2. David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who's David speaking to? Who's David speaking to? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Who's he talking to? Himself. And so the third thing when it comes to saying thanks is we need to stop and say, hey, have you stopped and given thanks to God for what he's done today? It's so easy to rush through our day and get into all the stuff, but, but God wants us to stop and remind ourselves, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So we need to say it to God, to others, and to ourselves. The next one of the way that we can, we can, um, the practical ways in we can show out um, um, Thanksgiving is show, is the word show. In, in that leper again, he does this, it says, and then he came, praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself before Jesus. His actions, his body, his whole life spoke of his thankfulness to Jesus. He threw himself down and went, thank you, Jesus. And sometimes, Our thanksgiving needs to get past our lips. We need to be able to show it in our lives, in active devotion. Remember Mary Magdalene? She had so much to be thankful for. And what does she do? She comes running to Jesus, not worried about anybody else, what anybody else thinks, and she cries. And she washes Jesus' feet with her tears, and she wipes it with her hair, and then she breaks this expensive ointment and anoints his feet. Her actions declared her devotion to him. Her actions showed that thanks. And so we need to say it, but we also need to show it in our lives, in our, in our actions, and in our devotion. The third one, we've done quite a bit this morning. The third one is to sing. Um, and people go, well, it's not my thing. <laughs> Firstly, the Lord says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It does not sing, say, sing beautifully. It, but it does say, sing and give thanks. Uh, thanks, Amanda. <laughs> Um, it, even the leper, when he comes up, remember it says he comes back praising God in a loud voice, not mumbling it under his breath, but in a loud voice. Psalm 100 is called the, the, the giving thanks psalm, and it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. We need to be singing. Um, and again, it's a command. It, it, God knows what we need. And, and when we stop and we sing praises to him, Psalm 95, 2 says, Come let, it, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Psalm 147, 7 says, Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God with a lyre, with our instruments, with our voices. He wants us to think, sing thing, and, and, and give praise. And then in Psalm 100, that verse that says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And enter his courts with praise. That's what, that's what singing and thanking God does, is it ushers us into his presence. 
It's about not coming to him in fear, not coming to him in doubt, but being able to, when I stop and I give thanks and I sing it and I say it and I show it, my perspective changes. And I'm able to go, God, you're good and you've got this. So that when I start praying about those needs, my faith is up there because I know, as we've seen this morning, God who's done it before will do it again. And so it's the, the joy of being able to sing and enter his praise with thanks, gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. The fourth one is serve. And maybe it's not one that we often equate with acts of thanksgiving. But when we serve, Scripture says, it's our way of thanking God. So those folks that stood up earlier, they, they thank and praise God through their lives and through their service. I've been talking to some folks, and we were talking about priorities in life, and God being first, and our family being second. And interesting, often, service or ministry came third. Where biblically, that's not the way it is, because serving or ministry is an act of worship to God, so it needs to be first. It's about God. It's my way of expressing myself to Him. And so my service and my ministry is above my wife or my husband or my family or my kids. It's God first. Seek him first. Worship him with my service. Joshua had the the right idea when he said, as for me and my house. So he says, me and my kids. You know what? It's about the main thing. And we will serve the Lord. So another way of giving thanks is through our service. And I really want to encourage you. There's such a blessing that is that, that, that you get as you're able to serve your great father. What a blessing. There's nothing quite like it. Somebody was, uh, I was talking to somebody, and they were talking about how, you know, we as the family is the body. And as we're all called to serve in whatever capacity, and some of the mouth, probably me, um, <laughs> some of the legs, some of the hands, whatever there is. But they were saying, you know, the interesting thing when it comes to serving, in our body, if one thing doesn't work, if, if we break our leg, we call all of ourselves handicapped. And we have to push people around in wheelchairs or crutches. You know, the picture holds true in, in the church. We are the body of Christ that are all called, all of us are called to serve. That's our way of giving thanks. And when we do it together, we're a healthy, functioning, worshipping church. But if we don't, even if some of us do but others don't, what happens is we limp. and We don't live the fullness that God has for us. So I encourage you to serve. And the last one, maybe it sounds a bit strange, but the one of the ways to give praise is to stop. Stop comparing. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> but, but, but think about it. When I compare, oh, you know, I, I, I don't want to sing worship because you're Terry or Wendy or Catherine and... What we do when we compare is we don't give thanks to God, but we actually take away the glory that he's given us. And so we need to stop comparing and say, thank you, God, for my voice. Thank you, God, for my life. Thank you, God, for what you've given me. We must stop complaining. It's so easy to see all the negative. But when we stop and you actually start writing it down, we have so much to be thankful for. God is good and he never, ever leaves us or fails us. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness. He is worthy of our thanks and praise. So we need to stop comparing, stop complaining, and stop grumbling. So my heart is as we leave from this place, that we go out with thankfulness in our words, to God, to others, to ourselves. That we go out and we show it in our actions. That we serve, that we sing, and that we stop and honor God in everything that we say and do. So in this service, it's, it's, such a, it's such a privilege to be able to stop and thank God. But Terry said it at the beginning of this month. She said, you know what? If, if, we, if we really battled and couldn't think of anything else to be thankful for, if Jesus on the cross was all that we had, we would have enough to be thankful for the rest of our lives. And let's be honest, we've got way more than that. Because when Jesus gave his life, he didn't just give us salvation. He gave us the fullness of life. He gave us life and life abundantly. So he has given, he exchanged, we're going to commemorate it now at communion. He exchanged that, thanks my darling. He, he exchanged that, 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 that thing with us where he, I, got to, I got to get all of, I got to receive all of him. And he got to receive, he took all of me. 
So I get to live not only from, from what he's won for me, but from the fullness of his life. So living my life in worship to him is a way of thanksgiving. And so the communion table for me is the greatest table of thanksgiving because we give thanks for that beautiful gift of Jesus and the salvation that he's won for us and the life that he has given us and the breakthrough that he's brought in our lives. So can I ask that those who are serving communion um, will come up and they're going to start handing out um, the, the elements. But as we prepare our hearts, God invites us to this table of thanksgiving and he says, remember, remember what I've done. Remember what I've, what I've done for you. What I've, the, everything that we've been talking about, the cross, the life, the abundance that he has given us. Remember. And as you do that, some of you, maybe you have, have um, I think you were all given streamers at the beginning of the service. As you prepare your heart, as we lay down the junk and go, God, I'm sorry for that. But I receive the fullness of the cross and what you have won for me. As we, we think about all that he's done for us, why don't you take a stream and at, at the end, there's a piece of paper. And as part of your, your preparing your heart for communion, I just want to encourage you to write down. Write down your thanks to God today. Whatever's on your heart. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love. Thank you for my family. Whatever there. In preparing your heart for communion, let us just write down our thanks and we'll deal, we'll deal with it later. But just the pen should be under your chair or around you. There are some up front. But this time is to stop and prepare your heart for him. And maybe write it out as well. So as you just considered all that he's done for us and as you look um, if you still have the bread and the wine, just as a remembrance. That, that's what this meal is about, is remembering what Jesus has done, remembering his goodness to us, that his body was broken so that, we could re- that he could take all that was our mess and that, was, that which was broken in our lives. And his blood was poured out so that we could have life and life abundantly in him. That's our Jesus. And so let's just bow in prayer. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you came and you died on the cross for us. Thank you that you loved us so much that that you came and you took our place. Thank you, Jesus, that your body was broken so that we could be whole. Jesus, thank you that you, you, you... paid the price for our sin, that we could be righteous in you. Thank you, Jesus, that you took our faltering and our fallen steps and you gave us life and life to the full in you. So thank you for your blood that was poured out. Thank you, just as it resembles the grape juice that of new life, because of you we have new life in you and we give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you eat and drink now? As we come to the close of our service, we are just we're going to end off with a song that we've been singing all month called Praise. And it's the song that I, I spoken to me. The words are no matter what's going on in our lives, we get to praise. God's got this. So I don't need to look at my circumstances. I get to look at him and I get to thank him for what he's done, what he's doing and what he's going to do. And so we are going to be singing it shortly and the the teenagers have learned to dance with that. And what I want to say is part of showing our thanks, if you want to dance, dance. If you want to sing, sing with all your heart. Because our God is worthy of praise. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I don't want to be the nine lepers. I want to be that one that comes and falls at his feet, singing loud and giving thanks because he is worthy of all our praise. Why don't you stand and let's praise together. So don't sit. We're just going to close the meeting and pray. But one last thing you have to do after prayer, your, your streamers, as an act of showing thankfulness, you are to please throw it over the tree after the service. Bless you. So, Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. And, Father, that we live our lives, that we would live our lives praising and thanking you, that we would enter your courts with thanksgiving and enter your gates with praise. And so, Father, as we go, help us to, again, keep turning our eyes to you, for you are good. And you go before us and you make ways where there seems to be no way, as we heard in Torah's testimony. Thank you, Jesus, that our praise is for you and you alone. Amen.